This is the White Stag by Kate Serpity, uh, part six, the second half of chapter three. Proud, beautiful Electa captured the hearts of everyone. The day came, came when she and Bendigaz stood on the altar, altar steps, their hands clasped over the flaming torch. Huns, Magnars, and Cimmerians, old and young, sick and well, waited with bowed heads while Deimos, the blind prophet, poured the water over their hands. They spoke the age-old vows. Through fire and water I come to thee. Not fire nor water shall take me from thee. And it was as if the earth and sky had echoed these words as thousands who assembled around the altar repeated them. Quick tears of happiness sprang into Electa's eyes and she bowed her head humbly. For this was more than her own marriage. It was a union of two great tribes brought together by the, world, the will of the Lord. Through her tears, she watched a long procession of gift bearers, watched the oldest warriors presented Bendigaz with a gift of the Huns, a large white flag. Watch as Bendigaz unfurled it and let it flutter in the wind. Then as she looked at the flag, the icy hand of fear gripped her for a moment, and a small voice in her heart cried out against this symbol of the future. Painted on the snowy white silk was a red eagle with great wings spread wide. Its cruel beak opened, clutching a flaming sword in its talons. It fluttered behind her like a living thing a ruthless bird of prey waiting, waiting. But before her were thousands of people listening in silence for a word of approval, people who had given her loyalty and love and her people and the people of Bendigaz who were ready to give their lives, ready to, to go through suffering and death under this flag. She was one of them now and she must accept the fate. Once more, unafraid, she faced the waiting crowd, proud, brave, beautiful Electa, wife of Bendigaz. Then she removed the golden belt of her gown and fa fastened it firmly to the flag, a silent pledge, more eloquent than any word she might have spoken. Soon came the coldest, cruelest winter of the Huns and Magyars had ever known. Snow lay thick on the ground for months, and the icy northerly winds howled like malignant demons. When finally spring came, the, came the thawing snow swelled the river into raging, raging torrents impossible to cross. Unwanted idleness had begun to chaff the restless spirit of the warriors. As spring passed into summer, they become, became sullen and irritable, and still Bendigaz, for the first time in his life, stood undecided. He was torn between the du duty to his people and anxiety for his beloved Electa, for Electa was ill. Since the long, cruel winter, she had been burning with a strange, slow, so, slow fever which zapped her strength and left her pale and wan. He could not let her he could not take her into dangers waiting for them once they crossed they left this haven of safety. This delay and peaceful contentment of the Magyars became a challenge to the Huns. A contrary word, a rough jest, would lead to ugly quarrels. Tensions grew until the brothers tribe stood on the brink of open enmity. In vain did the old Magyar plead with his men, and in vain did Hunar remind them of the happy days when the two tribes were truly brothers. In vain did Bendigaz punish those again and again who started these bitter wrangles. S 
suppress his warriors for a few days he could, but their resentment uh, smoldered under his discipline as embers smolder under a thin blanket of ashes. A gust of wind, a careless word, and the fire of hatred would erupt, would hatred would flame up again. Bendigaz, in desperation, went to the remote tent where Deimos, the prophet, spent his days. He found Deimos deep in meditation. He waited until the prophet turned his sightly eyes towards him. Bendigaz, my great white eagle, he said gently. Bendigaz sank to his knees beside him and grasped his hands. Yes, Deimos, it is Bendigaz, but not the great white eagle, just a humble and deeply troubled man, Deimos sighed. Has love made you weak and blind, Bendigaz? Has it taken the sword of Hudar out of your hand? Are you deaf to the call of your destiny? Bendigaz bowed his head. Yes, Deimos, I am blind, weak, and deaf. I have almost lost faith in the distant promised land. No, wait, he, no, wait, he cried as Deimos shook off, shook him off and sprang to his feet. Wait, Deimos, listen to me. Our brothers, the Magyars, are content to stay here on the shelter land between the two great rivers. Here we have found friends. Here we have found happiness. Perhaps this is the land that we have been seeking, Deimos. Deimos lifted his hand to silent, silence him. But Bendigaz also sprang to his feet now, aroused, aroused. The racking indecision and suspense of long months cul culminated in a burst of anger. Where then is Hudar, he cried. Why does he let this terrible hatred between the brothers poison our souls? Bendigaz whispered uh, Deimos in horror. Are you like the Magyars who have lost your faith? Do you, like they, shrink from suffering and death to gain that land? They will be punished for their weakness, Bendigaz. Long after the Huns have found the promised land, they shall still be homeless, wandering the wilderness. Some day they will follow your path. But if they back down now, if they choose the easier way for seven generations, they will roam the earth, outcasts among men. Your path leads westward, my white eagle. Your path leads to Hudar. My path, cried Bendigaz. Where is my path? What is? Where is Hudar's guiding hands? Why is he silent? You fool, rang out the voice of Deimos, and it was terrible to hear. How dare you challenge the wrath of your Lord? Go before I strike you. Go call the people together to the altar. Light the fire. You will you will hear the voice, Bendigaz, and you will tremble and hide your faith in shame and remorse. Go. Bendigaz looked at the pale face of a and a strange fear began to gnaw at his heart. He left the tent and walked in a daze. He gave orders to the heralds to call everyone to the altar place to light the fires then he went to electa he he drew she drew him to her and pointed a pale finger at the red eagle on the flag spread with its full width on the folds of the tent the red eagle bendigaz she whispered it's moving reaching out there those those cruel claws for me I am afraid. He stroked her heart, hot brow gently. It is but a painted flag, Electa. Do not be afraid. I will take it away. Take it, Bendigaz, or it will take me, and please stay with me. It is growing dark. I cannot stay now, Electa, but I will send a woman to you, and, and while I am gone, he said. She closed her eyes with a sigh. He stood for a moment, looking down at her, and then went away, carrying the flag. The day had been breathlessly hot, and now the night had now 
that night have fallen. Veils of heated mist rolled lazily in the air. The, the sky was dark. The stars and moon were hidden behind slate-colored storm clouds. From the distance came the threatening rumble of thunder. People were walking from all directions towards the altar where the flag was already burning brightly. Bendigaz drove the flagpole in, into the ground outside the tent. Then he stopped. A Cimmerian woman, he stopped a Cimmerian woman and told her to stay with Electa. Watch her, guard her. He was almost pleading. She is ill and soon will have a child. Do not leave her for a moment tonight. When he reached the altar place, the great clearing was packed with people. All sight of the pale face, all sight of the pale face and fierce burning eyes of Bendigaz, of Bendigaz people fell back silently to make way for him. Deimos was standing on the high altar steps in silent prayer. Hunar and Magyar stood side by side on the lower step. Men were, were feeding the fire with logs. Women threw herbs into the flames. Deimos now turned. His face was stern and his sightless eyes were cold as ice. Bendigaz, he called. Bendigaz, whom I named the White Eagle, Face your people from the altar of your God and take back the words of doubt you have spoken to me. Bendigaz was silent. He stood, his fist clenched at his side like an image carved of storm. Speak, Bendigaz, cried Deimos. Are you afraid to face the scorn of your men? You who are not afraid, who were not afraid to challenge the wrath of Hudar. I am not afraid, roared Bendigaz. I will respect my words and not take them back. Men, listen to me. If this is not the land we have been seeking, this sheltered land between the two great rivers, why is Hudar silent? Why does he not guard me? I am not afraid of danger or suffering or death, but I want to know. He spun around and whipped out his sword and held it up to the sky. Here is thy sword, Hudar. Turn it against my heart. Strike me, but let these pe let my people see the truth. Only silence answered him, menacing silence from the laden sky above and a horrified silence from the people around him. He thrust... the sword into the fire and stood defiantly, his arms folded, his angry eyes staring into the sky. And then the storm broke suddenly without warning. It was upon them with lightning and thunder that roared and howled like an army of fur fur furious demons. Trees groaned and crashed to the ground to be picked up again and and sucked into the the spinning dark funnel of the whirlwind, leaving a clean-cut path of distraction behind it. It was approaching the altar, and the people ran out of its way in terror. Bendigaz and Deimos were carried along with the frenzied crowd out of the way of the howling, spinning death. It struck the altar with an impact that sent stones crashing to the ground and swept the fire and swords swirling into the air. The sword was carried westward. Two great tongues of flame streamed behind it like fiery red wings. The red eagle, the red eagle, cried Bendigaz, and fought through the crowd to reach Electa's tent. A dreadful, a dreadful fear clutched his heart. No one noticed him now. They were watching in breathless silence as the sword flamed westward, east. Earth and sky shared the silence as, all f as if all their forces had spent their strength in the storm. Then Demos the prophet was speaking again, and his voice was like the tro tolling of great bells. Alec Al Attila is born, he cried. Attila, with a mighty voice 
and red wings as blood. Attila, who will lead you to the promised land, the red eagle, greatest of all war warriors, Attila. A piercing scream went through the air, and all eyes toward, turned towards the tent of Electra. The woman whom Bednegaz had left with his wife ran towards him, her face deathly pale, her eyes streaming with tears. You have a man-child, Bendigaz, a mighty man-child, but Electa is dead.